happens to me on the regular. I, I be trying to work. I've been working on somebody for three years to make sure the day that I miss. What in the world? But the thing about it is, guess what? They came. But then that makes them question me. Because I'm not here. How are they going to invite? Check this out. This lady was inviting me to church, and her church was an hour away. When Amber and I first met, I put her in the car. I said, Amber, come on, go to church with me somewhere else. I go, you know, I'm sitting in the, in the church and whatnot, and I'm looking around. I don't see this person. I'm like, I just drove an hour away to, to worship with somebody who's been trying to compel to get me just to come visit because they knew. And I already had a relationship with Christ. They knew I was faithful at my church. You know, so I go all the way an hour away. And they're not there. I called them. And I know Zion is terrible. I called them the next day. I said, I came to your church. Your pastor preached a good word. They said, oh, you showed up. I said, I showed up. They said, oh, yeah. Well, I was, you know, I, I just took a Sunday off. I was just at home. You know, I ain't like going. What? Now, now my thing was, where, where's your witness? Mm -hmm. Where's your dedication? You know, where's your dedication? You were tired. Well, guess what? I'm pretty sure your pastor was tired. If anybody here don't think I'm tired, then let me let me tell you firsthand, I'm tired. I need a break. Me too. Anyway, so the thing about it is, go out and compel. Well, when you compel, you gotta be present. I used to say this all the time when I was in the military. One thing uh, I used to do in the morning as dorm, as dorm director, I would make sure I go downstairs at 445, you know, when, when the trumpets and all that great stuff go off and whatnot. And I have to give accountability for the dorm. And I would stand there and say 62 pregnant and accounted for because that's how many people we had in the dorm. And here's the crazy thing. Guess what? If anybody was not accounted for, I had to give a reason why they were not there. Did you tell the truth? Yeah, I told the truth. I made sure everybody was there. I didn't want the commanding officer to come down on me. So my question is this. How many times are we not present and accounted for when the Lord shows up and wants to take role? Mm -hmm. How can you uh, be, be, be compelling people and you're not where you need to be when you need to be there? Mm -hmm. uh, I'll give you another example. There was a sermon I preached uh, about two years ago. It's called Seat Filler. I actually watched it last night. You know, it was seat filler. It's on YouTube if you want to go see it. But there's a movie that comes on BET called The Seat Filler. And what that is, is it primarily deals with an uh, individual who, at this show, at this award ceremony, or whatever type of event it is, they hire seat fillers so that when the camera pans the room, it looks like it's a full audience. And what that seat filler does is it occupies the seat until the real person shows up. So are you just a seat filler in the house of God? You're just occupying a chair until the real saint shows up? Or can you say that I belong here? I, I, I know who God is. I know who God has commanded me to be. I know my assignment that God has given me. And I'll be present and accounted for when the Lord shows up. Guess what? Most of the times what happens is when the Lord, you've been praying for something, you've been seeking God for something, and the day you don't show up is when God delivers. And then you hear about it from sister so-and-so or brother so-and-so, and then you're like, man, I missed it. Mm. What was more important? What you were doing or you getting what you needed from God? Amen. You know, I'm just at this point where I'm crazy enough to believe that God can do it, but it starts with us. Amen. Right. We're so used to wanting God to start something. No, no, God is not. Most. He gave you the instructions. Just go. Brother Vaughn sings that song, I'll go if I gotta go by myself. Are we waiting on a crowd to go? Or can we say, you know what, I'll go if I gotta go by myself. I've been on a lonely road all this time, I might as well keep going. How many of you know that sometimes being with Christ, it'll make you a loner? Amen. Amen. It'll make you be by yourself and you'll find yourself in certain situations and predicaments and you wonder if there's anybody who can walk this road with you or if you're all alone. You're right. 
Check this out. I'll give you an example. In Matthew chapter number 26, I briefly hit it on Sunday. But Jesus, after the Last Supper, after they have had communion, after they have, uh, he has washed their feet, he goes out into the mountain of Olives. He goes to the Garden of Gethsemane. He sits the disciples down, only takes three with him, Peter, James, and John, the two sons of Zebedee. He goes a little further. He sits Peter and the two sons down and says, y'all sit here, I got to go pray. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Can't take everybody with you, so some roads you have to go down by yourself. Amen. Some roads you have to compel people by yourself because yeah. guess what? If you wait on other people, you'll never get there. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Can't nobody bring you closer to God. You've got to do that your own. Mm -hmm. How do you do that? That means you got to study. You got to get in His Word. Proverbs chapter number, uh, chapter number eight, verse number seventeen, I believe. Uh, let me just double check. Let me go there so I can make sure that I'm giving it to you right. Uh, Proverbs 8 and 17. Uh, let's see. Let's see. 8 and 17. It is right. I love them that love me and those that seek me early shall find me. Yes. Mm -hmm. Forget the early part for a moment because I can talk about that all by myself. You know, how people wait till late in the day to go to God when you need to start your day off with God. That's the problem, really, why the world is like it is. We got babies killing babies now. Why? It ain't because they took prayer out of school. It's because parents took prayer out of the children. Because guess what? When, when, when the government says you can't pray in school, that never said you got to stop your child from learning how to pray. That's right. Because, see, they may tell me I can't pray out loud, I can't pray over the announcement, but that don't mean I can't sit at my desk and have a word of prayer. See, prayer is vital. Prayer is seeking God. Prayer is asking God to come into your life. And the Bible says, I love them that love me, and they that seek me early shall find me. If you never seek God, how could you expect to find him? Amen. The world needs to see God. On May the 7th, check this out, I participate in this every year. It's the National Day of Prayer on May the 7th. It's a Thursday. And at this event, at the convention center, we're all going to gather together. Uh, it's about 40, 40 to 52 churches. Last year, it actually got up to 108, I believe, churches uh, who came together on one day to stand and pray. Now, check this out. We packed out Christopher Newport about four years ago and it was a major success last year it was a major success and my thing is why do we have to wait one time a year to may the seventh to have a day of prayer exactly. Amen. you know granted that is the national day of prayer but what are we doing as individuals to have a day of prayer are we gathering with one another or do we have to wait to prayer service on Sunday or whatever day people have it or Wednesday night to really get into a mode of prayer you should be able to pray all the time. I told y'all I don't listen to music while I drive in my car. Why? Because that's the time of prayer for yes. me. Today, yes. I've been on the road since 10 o'clock this morning until uh, I got back to Hampton at about 6.30. So from 10 to 6.30, I sat in the car. I think I might have had the music on for about 10 minutes out of that whole time. Why? Because that was me and God's time. I was Amen. talking to him. I was like, God, let me tell you about my problems. And then when I did turn the music on, the first song that came on was My Soul is Anchored. <laughs> Hallelujah. Why? Because I got to learn how to seek him. And sometimes with all the calamity going on around me, and when I'm at home, I got to deal with First Lady and her illness and make sure she's okay, that I don't get time sometimes to go to God for me. So why? I need to take that time. Any time I get, I need to just have a word of prayer. Sometimes I come down here at 1.30, 2 o'clock in the morning just to get away from everything and everybody and have a word of prayer. Why? Because I got to seek him. If my life is ever going to change, or if I'm ever going to be able to make an impact on somebody else's life, I got to make sure I know how to go to God. Amen. 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 I don't want to call on a God and he don't answer. Woo. I don't want to go to God and not know how to approach him. Mm -hmm. Because you do understand you can approach God wrong, right? That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. I, I go to God just like I talk to y'all. 
Why? Because I know that he hears me. I know that he walks with me. So we got a personal relationship. So I don't have to go to God like he's a stranger. But I can go to him like, hey, you know what, God? Look, God, today, you know, it, it's just Mario. It. You know, I'm, I'm going through. You know, already know. I'm going, I got some issues. You know, I'm at a conflict right now, God, because I, I, I want to serve you. But at the same time, God, I'm looking at how the world is prospering or what it looks like they prosper. And God, I just need you to tell me that I ain't crazy for trying to serve you. You know, I go to God just like I am. Yes, yeah. Why? Because he knows who I am. That's right. Hallelujah. Now, if you don't, if he don't know who you are, you might need to go back to the Lord's prayer. Our Father, which are the heaven. You might need to pray like Jesus taught us to pray, because he don't know who you are. But you know what? I just believe if you got a relationship with him, you can go to him any time of the day you want to. Yeah, that's right. Be real with him. That's right. You know, stop lying to God. You know? mm. Telling God that everything all right. God know everything ain't all right. So everything will be all right, but He know right now you going through. Yes, yes. You about you about to give up on your relationship with God, and you got a nerve to go to Him and say, "God, everything's good." No, it ain't. No, it ain't. I tell the truth. You know, we 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 have a tendency, and this is just from what I notice in church. We have a tendency to lie to Him and then come back and tell the truth at the same time. God, everything all right. I love you. I, you know, and, and, and by the end of your prayer, Lord, I don't know what I'm going to do. This thing ain't working. You know, you know God, I'm about, to, I'm about to lose my mind. You know, I'm just going crazy. You know, for real, come on now. Let's be honest. Yeah. You know, why, why don't we just start honest? You know, God, God, I don't understand what I'm going through, but you know what, God? You oh. told me to go out and compel people, but I can't go compel them if I'm a mess on the outside. Right. You know, I could be a mess on the inside because I know you'll take the inside and you'll work it on the outside. But you know what, God? I just need you right now because right now I'm, I'm going through some. I got some issues. Mm -hmm. And it's okay to say, God, I got some issues with you. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. You Amen. You better be real. Yeah, it's real. He, he know what's going on in the first place. He's just waiting on you to open your mouth and say right. I got issues with God sometimes. Mm -hmm. You want to ask why? You know, I, I ain't happy with some of the decisions he told me to make. Mm -hmm. Why? Because it's easier if I go that way. Mm -hmm. But he told, check this out, I, I want to go to the kitchen. And God told me to go walk all the way around there and then come down the back wall and go to the kitchen when I can just go up this way and go in the back. There's a reason. I, I ain't happy with that because there's more steps I got to make. God, no, I'm tired. Don't skip the problem. But guess what? If I go that way, I may I may trip over a chair yes. that one that once wasn't there. But if I go this way, guess what? There's a path that's already made for me to get to the back. Yes. <clears throat> but because I don't understand, because I don't like God's process, I go ahead and try to do my own thing. Then I gotta go back to him and say, God forgive me, because I made a big mistake. Be honest. Hallelujah. You know, I, 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 you know, First Lady and I have had this conversation all the time, you know, where, you know, we have to be careful what we say even about her condition because that's just a direct dart at God. You know, uh, you know, I, I ain't happy with this. Well, wait a minute. God allowed this. The enemy can't inflict your body with nothing that God don't allow. The enemy can't inflict your finances if God didn't allow it. You do remember the story of Job, right? Yes, yes. But what did Job do? Job didn't complain, but instead Job began to even go to God in prayer for what was wrong. His friends. Job lost everything in chapter 1, but his relationship with God. But in chapter 42, he opens up the chapter in prayer for his friends who didn't understand the trials and tribulations he was going through. So Job understood, if I'm going to compel anybody, if I'm going to allow anybody to see my testimony or my witness, I got to make sure that I'm right. Mm -hmm. I got to make sure I, I, I have a relationship and a firm foundation. You ought not be a withered every time the wind blows. Mm -hmm. You don't believe me. The scripture is Isaiah 40 and 8. The grass withereth, the flower fadeth, but the word of our God shall stand forever. So I raise the question tonight, are you like the grass that goes to the left or the right anytime the wind blows? Are you like the rose that only lasts for a couple weeks and then it begins to fade? Or are you like the word of God that says you can stand through every type of season? Yes, yes, yes. How are we going to compel people when we just jelly backs? Mm -hmm. We spiritual punks. Come on now. Go ahead, Pastor. You can't stand for nothing. Mm. The first test you go through, it's over. Mm -hmm. You about to die. 
You didn't call Dr. Donato and told him to get JT Fisher to bring a, a hearse around because you just you just done. JT Fisher. You know? Why? Why? You know? Can we stop planning our own funerals? Amen. Spiritually. Let's go help for Jesus. How you gonna compel somebody and you don't even know nothing? That was a double negative. Yes, you're right. My text I used just now was a double negative, but your life not being able to function under the anointing that God has for you because you're too busy being wavered is a double negative. Mm -hmm. How can you say I love God, but then at the same time, you find yourself in a position where you're curious as to if you really do love God. 